Hey everyone, Cream Ray here, and today I have Alex Larea on with us. Alex, how's it going? I'm good, man. How are you doing? Good. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, happy to be here. So, you know, you just recently signed with the USL Championship team in LA. Can you know, let's talk a little bit about that. Are you excited about it? Um, yeah, I'm definitely excited. Um, it's going to be my third year in the championship. Um, so I'm really happy I was able to get this new contract and, you know, be a little bit closer to home and, you know, represent um, this organization. So I'm really excited and, and ready to get started. Yeah, it's awesome. Again, congratulations on the new signing. But, you know, before we dive into that, can, you know, can you share a little bit about yourself to the viewers? You know, who you are, where you're from, where you were born? Uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, you already introduced me. My name's Alex. Um, I pretty much lived in Southern California my whole life. Um, I always played soccer and I was born in Long Beach. Um, I went to, I went to high school in, in Chino Hills. And after that, um, I went to junior college to a school called Mount Sac. After after my first year there, I transferred to Cal State Northridge. I played um, the remainder of my three years there. And then um, pretty much after my senior year, that's, that's when I started my, signed my first contract um, by just kind of going to a combine and, and getting picked up from there. And that, that's where everything kind of got rolling. Got it. So you, so you mentioned you graduated from high school. And then, did, sorry, did you say that you went to college or university before signing? Yeah, yeah, I did. So I went to, I actually went to a junior college, a community college, before uh, eventually transferring to Cal State Northridge, which um, plays in the Big West. Um, but yeah, I played there my freshman year. Uh, we did well. Um, and then I ended up, because I qualified to transfer after my first year, I transferred to Cal State Northridge. And then I spent the remainder of my three years of eligibility there at CSUN. Nice. And then, you know, you, you mentioned you went to a combine tryout. You know, usually when players go to combine try, tryouts, not a lot of players get picked up. It's usually, you know, let's say, for example, out of 100, only a handful, five to 10 people get picked up per se. I think 10 is pushing it. But, you know, what combine did you go to and, and was there a feed to that combine? Yeah. So um, basically what happened was in the summer between my junior and senior year, um, that summer, I played EDL or USL2 um, with Ventura Fusion, and we did well. I had a good season there, and that kind of helped me like transfer over to, to my final season in college. Um, so I had a, a good season there with Fusion. Then I had a good season um, there at, at school at CSUN. And once that was all said and done, you know, obviously I still wanted to play. And so I was thinking about things I could do. And I remember that uh, there was a combine that they host pretty much every year where uh, USL coaches and, you know, other pro teams go out. And so um, I think the fee was like, like something like 100, 200 bucks, which in all honesty, I didn't even want to pay. Like I, I didn't even really, you know, consider it as like that serious of an option. Um, but I ended up going with a few of my other friends from college and um, not just myself, but another friend that I played with at CSUN got signed off that combine. So it was just two days. Both of us did well those two days. And then later that week, maybe two, three days after they, they offered us a contract. And just like that, I had my first deal. That's amazing. Um, you mentioned the combine that you don't, you didn't want to invest into it, but luckily you did, and you got picked up from there. Again, not a lot of players get picked up. Um, can we shout out the events hosts and um, how did you find out about it? Those, yeah, yeah. So it was Ventura Fusions Combine. Um, I still speak to to the staff there, and they helped me out a lot. Um, and they host it actually every year. Um, I think this year they held it in January, whereas when I went, it was in late December, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but they hold it every year. And like I said, I wasn't really 
trying to pay that amount, but eventually I just got around to thinking, oh, it's just an investment, you know, and you never know what can happen. And, you know, like I said, I had been working really hard to prepare for an opportunity like that. And luckily everything came together nicely. And, you know, that's, that's kind of where I got my start into, into the pro game. But um, I mean, if anyone's looking for an opportunity, like I said, they host it every year. And, and I mean, obviously it was worth it for me. That's amazing, Alex. What, how old were you when you went to the event and like what position did you play? Um, when, when did that happen? I think it was, I was like 20. I had to be like 20 because I'm 23 now. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be my third year playing in the championship around there. Um, early 20, would you say like early 20s or late 20s? No, early 20s because I'm 23 right now. Nice. So uh, that's crazy. So like, you know, because usually players get signed between like, you know, 16 to like 19, 20. And like later on, players start to like drop off because, you know, we're getting older per se. But, you know, again, like you're part of the, I usually say on, on the podcast, you're part of like the 0.002% that make it because around the world, there's um there's 2.3 or 2.5, uh, no, sorry, 230 million players around the world that play the game, but there was like only 130,000 players according to FIFA's 2019 report. So like, that's not even 1%, and, and you've made it, right, within the United States, which is, which is amazing, and it's, it's awesome to have you on. Um, sorry, so I, I know I was rambling on off over there, but so, you know, you got, you got your first signing. Who was the first team with? It was with Hartford Athletic. They, they play on the East Coast of the uh, USL Championship. So I, I got, originally I had a, a one-year deal plus an option year. And then the option is at their discretion whether they want to pick it up or not. Right. And my first year was um, actually 2020. So it was during the, the COVID pandemic. So it was a difficult year, obviously, for everybody. Um, you know, there was obviously things that like, changed throughout the league because of you know the pandemic which um made it difficult in a lot of ways but i mean it was still a really good experience and you know i was fortunate enough to have my option picked up at the end of the year and that's that's how i played my second year there nice uh, going back to like the numbers that i mentioned like do you even i i, I don't even think players uh, sometimes even like realize this but do you even know that like you're part of the one percent in the football industry like you're at the top I mean, I don't, I don't really consider it that way. I mean, I understand what you're saying. You know, yeah. I, mean, I do feel very fortunate and I'm very grateful for the position that I'm in, you know, so that's always in the back of my head. But at the same time, I mean, I'm, I feel, like I said, I feel very fortunate, but it, it was always something I worked for, like from a very, very like early age. I knew what I wanted. I, I set my goals early and, I made sure to work, you know, as hard as I could to get that. So when I was able to finally like sign that phrase deal, in a way it was, it was a surreal experience, you know, because you put all this work in and then it, it, you know, it finally comes to fruition. But also at the same time, you know, you kind of believe in yourself to the point where you're like, you know, I know I can do this. And then when it happens, you're like, okay, see, like, you know, it it wasn't all for nothing. And, and so, yeah, man, I, I am very grateful. Um, I mean, even going into college, you know, me being first generation in my family, you know, it, that in, in itself is, you know, um, something I always wanted to do. And I know that, like, percentage wise is difficult, you know, especially going to a D1 thing. But I mean, I feel like the odds are always, you know, against players. You just got to really push. And, and you know, you, if I'm a firm believer, if you work hard, you know, life will will reward you so that's that's just how i think of it absolutely what advice would you share with players uh, that want to go pro um i mean the most honest advice i can give anybody is um you really just have to put in the work like there's no way around it you know I, i know that sounds like very simple but like I said, I'm a firm believer that you're going to get out of life what you put in. You know what I'm saying? So if you work hard enough, and this is what my family always told me and my parents always told me as a kid, if you work hard enough, you're going to be able to achieve most of the things you set out to do. You know, and, and life, 
will reward you for for you know going that extra mile and being a hard worker. So you know, I know a lot of people strive to be a professional player, and you know, that's their dream. But a lot of times, players aren't realistic in the sense of the amount of work and the amount of sacrifice you need to make in order to to actually achieve that goal. And I mean, to be quite honest with you, it is a lot, you know, and you have to be really honest with yourself, whether you are fully committed, fully committed, or you're not. And unfortunately, you know, for a lot of players, even if you are fully committed, you know, there's still a chance that you won't make it. And that's, that's just the truth of, of the game and how things work, you know? Um, but like I said, if, if you, if you put the work in and you're consistent and you're patient and you're, you're mentally strong, you know, you, you have a good chance. Yeah. I like the way you put it, you know, even though if you're committed and you're putting in all the work, there's still that, that side of the game that you might not even make it right. Just due to the numbers. Um, that was a great point that you just gave. What do you think, you know, to dig a little bit deeper back into the combine when you were 20, what do you think made you stand out on the field? Um, I think, I think it was just my probably intensity, my work ethic, um, my willingness to, to fully commit to, you know, whatever was going on in the game. Um, I remember in the, very early in the first game, um, I, uh, the ball went up and I tried to bring it down. And it was one of those touches where I, I brought it down, but it kind of spun behind me. And one of my friends that was there from college, he read it and he just stole it. And he was off, like on a breakaway. And, you know, I just remember thinking like, you know, this is a pivotal moment because if they, if, you know, if you were to score off of this, you know, obviously it would be a bad start to my combine. And, you know, that could kind of, set the tone for the rest of of this whole thing but i just tracked as hard as i could i tracked back and i ended up making a really nice tackle to stop the breakaway and then after that i just kind of settled down you know the nerves settled down and i just played how i how i knew how to play so i mean that was a big moment for me like early in the combine and yeah i mean i just went out there and and tried to be the best version of myself i wasn't trying to do anything extra I wasn't trying to really impress. I was just going out there, trying to play solid and, you know, make sure I showcase myself, but not doing too much. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like a lot of times when people go to combats and things like that, they think they have to do more than what's necessary. And, you know, of course you want to impress and you want to, you want to showcase your, your abilities, but at the same time, you have to trust that you, playing as as you know how to play will be sufficient to to get looks so that's that's how i think about it yeah great points what what things changed for you alex you know once you've put that pen to paper and you're you're officially professional you're getting paid uh, to do what you love what things changed in your life right because your status changed um i mean i i wouldn't say it's strange because i wouldn't say all too much change like mm. and I, I think that's due to the fact that even before I, I signed professionally I tried to act as professional as I could mm. and, and the reason for that is because I think if if you kind of treat yourself as a professional before you even sign you give yourself even that more of a chance you know what I'm saying so I mean, as far as like the way I would act or, or the things I would do off the field, how I would work, you know, that stayed pretty consistent throughout my whole career because I knew that it takes a lot, you know, to, to actually make that jump. And you want to give yourself the best chances as possible to even get to that point. So, I mean, as far as that, not too much change. I mean, obviously it becoming a job, you know, kind of tweak things in the sense that you know, at times you can feel more pressure and even like, I mean, I don't know when you, when you make anything into a job, it's not a hobby anymore. You know, it can be difficult to really enjoy it every day. And, and, and not that to say I don't enjoy it every day because 
I love what I do. But there's that added pressure, you know, that this is what you do now for a living and, and you make money off of this. So, um, you know, I think I think in that sense, it was a little bit different when it switched to a job. And, you know, um, especially when it was my rookie year, because the nerves and like the pressure and things like that, even in training, obviously, there's expectations that you have to meet, you know, and the fact that everyone's there trying to, um, you know, just do their job as best they can. That, that's what I feel like for me, I noticed, um, you know, pretty quickly. But now I I feel like I have a better grasp of, of how it is to be a professional. And I, I really just try to enjoy it as much as I can because I know it's not a long profession and I know it'll go by really quickly. So I just try and enjoy it the, be the best that I can and, and you know, um, work hard every day. Absolutely. Uh, did you mention for the last three years, did you play for three different teams or? No, so I, I played... So if you remember, I signed for Hartford. Hartford, yeah, and yeah. Gave me a one-year deal, yeah. plus an option. And those were my first two years. So I played my first year, my, which was during the COVID pandemic. After that, during the offseason, they picked up my option. So that means I, I'm going to play for them for a second year. I played my second year there. And then once my contract was done, that's when I I came back in the offseason. Um, I went on trial to Las Vegas Lights. And I'd say about like maybe three weeks I was there on trial. And then they eventually, they eventually signed me and, and that's where I'm at now. Nice. Um, you know, for, play, uh, for players that are watching this video that don't know what options are, can you just please share with them what uh, options yeah, are? So, yeah, I should, I should explain that a little bit better. So like sometimes teams will, will put that onto a contract. So um, let's say you get a one-year deal like I did, right? And then the option year would be at the club's discretion. So, like, if they want you to come back for another year, that's where they pick up your option. And then you play there for another year. They, are, they don't have to do that. So, if they don't want you to come back for another year, they decline your option. And then you just play there for your one year and your contract's up. Right? But sometimes in your option year, they they can increase salary or, or change, tweak your contract a little bit, maybe different bonuses or, or, you know, um, most of the time I, I think it's, you know, a little bit of an increase in your salary. Um, but like I said, it's up to them based off your performance the first year. Right. So that's how they make a decision, whether they want you to come back or not. Um, so that's why I say I was fortunate enough to where they did decide to pick up my option, which would make me a player, which would, it did make me a player for, for Hartford for one more year. And that's where I spent my second year. And then after that, my contract was up. So Nice. I've done a, a couple of interviews from guys that have played at Hartford. I'm not too sure if you've played with them. But, yeah, that's awesome. But now you're at uh, Las Vegas Lights, which is cool. You're in the, the hot sun. Um, you know, you mentioned contracts. So we know agents are important or sports lawyers. Do you have an agent or a sport lawyer, sport, sport lawyer? Yeah, actually, I do have an agent, um, but I didn't always have one. So that's kind of the thing. Um, the way the way I got started and how my my career kind of kind of developed. Um, I, I mean, a lot of people had mentioned to me getting getting an agent and it would help and, you know, these kinds of things. but. I mean, me as a person, I was always very, very skeptical, I, I guess you can say, to just trust anyone as far as like, you know, the direction my career was going and things like that. So um, because of that, I would try to explore that option a little bit. But like I said, because I went to a combine, right, and from the combine, I got a straight contract and signed right away, there wasn't really a need for me to have an agent I felt like you know what I'm saying because I signed the contract I played for the year I mean things worked out and they I picked up uh they picked up the option so I have another uh year to play and so um that's why I, I felt like I didn't need one as far as you know 
uh, what I was going to do and, and, you know, where I was going to go. Now, eventually, people did contact me and, you know, offered to be my agent and things like that. And that's kind of how I got in touch with my current agent. Um, but, yeah, that's that's kind of how that whole thing ended up happening. So, I mean, if you're a player and, and you feel like you absolutely have to have an agent, I mean, in some circumstances, it can help. In other circumstances, I'm, you know, I wouldn't say you absolutely need one to make it professionally because I, I didn't have one and I got a contract, right? And, like, you know, a lot of times, um, I mean, as far as as far as players and salary wise, it's not like we're in the prem and you know where we're dealing with crazy crazy amounts of money, you know. So, you know, you can kind of maneuver it yourself, you know, if you're if you're smart about it. Yeah, great points. Um, you mentioned being skeptical. So this is kind of towards one soccer nation. Were you skeptical about doing being on the podcast? <laughs> Oh no! Nah. <laughs> no, I was, I'm just asking because you mentioned being skeptical. So I'm like, I'm, I mean, I was curious. No, 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 not, not in the sense of like doing a podcast or like. Okay, talking. cool. Yeah. It was more in the sense like, because you're with an agent, right? Most of the time, or some agents, they want you to sign a contract, right, for X amount of years, mm -hmm. say one to two years, and I mean the the way I am, I want to make sure. I trust the person I'm talking to before I get into a contract. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not just going to sign a contract with anybody that just is, you know, offering their services if I don't really know them, you know, which, I mean, I don't think anything's wrong with thinking like that because you just want to make sure you have a mutual trust. And that that's, that's all I, I really wanted to say. Yeah. I 100% agree with you. How'd you, you know, can we just like quickly go over that? How'd you, you know, because obviously the agent at the time, you didn't know him. So how did you, um, what was like the process of uh, getting to know your agent and then feeling comfortable to the point where like, yeah, I'm going to be binded in this contract with him now? Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of a funny story too. Um, he had actually reached out to me during my second season. Um, and um, I was going through a tough time. And so like, we we didn't talk for a while and, you know, during the off season, obviously, I had to kind of look for another team. And so I was talking to a few, a few of the contacts I had made to see if they could help me out. And eventually, I reached back out to him and said, look, it's my situation, you know. And, you know, I let him know that, you know, it wasn't necessarily, like, personal that, that we lost contact for a little bit. It was more of a sense that, you know, I felt like on my part, I had um, some things I had to deal with. and then. Um, you know, through that loss of communication, we kind of drifted apart for a bit. But eventually, I, I reached back out to him and let him know the circumstances, what my situation was. And that's when we kind of got to talking again. And, you know, he really helped me out during the off season, which mm. I appreciated because I didn't have anything going for me, really. And, you know, luckily, this Las Vegas thing, you know, fell in my lap for whatever reason you know which i was very grateful for and then i just kind of ran with it and you know now i'm here and and because he helped me out so much I, I, and we kind of you know built a relationship i i felt comfortable enough to to sign with him yeah that's amazing it's it's good that everything worked out in your favor and everything you know everything happens for a reason but it's it's great that it all worked out um moving to, to on the pitch you know what type of player are you? How tall are you? Are you a fast player? You know, do you, you know, talk, let's tap into those type of things. So let's just start with like, you know, how tall are you? So I'm, I'm about 6'1". 6'1". So, yeah, I'm 6'1", I'm around like 180. Um, I'm a center back, but okay. more recently I've been playing as a six. Um, mm. yeah, the, I'd say the type of player I am, I mean, I'm, I'm a defender at heart. You know, I love defending. Um, I love getting into challenges and tackles and things like that. Um, so that's that's the kind of player I am. I'm a hard worker on and off the pitch. And, um, yeah, I, I think that that sums up what the kind of player I am. 
Yeah, well, what about like, you know, do you do any like banter on the field to, to the other team? Um, are you a focused type of player? Like, you know, tap into that. Uh, I wouldn't really say I like banter the other team unless they start with me. Like, I'm not, I am very vocal on the pitch, but it's not usually towards the other team, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. So, like, I'm very, like, I communicate a lot with my teammates and especially as a center back, you know, you have to communicate with the people in front of you, organize, you know, things of that nature. But, um, I mean, unless they, <laughs> they try to start things with me, I don't really look, you know, go looking for anything. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I'd say I'm a very intense player. So when I'm on the field, I like to bring a lot of intensity and, mm -hmm. and you know, um, just be strong on the pitch and, and help my team out as best I can defensively, you know, winning balls back, um, things like that. Nice. What advice would you give to players that play in that sixth position? Um, can you give, you know, players that play in the sixth position three tips to help you in your game? Yeah, so, I mean, I want to say I'm, a, I'm a, like, that much of an expert to say because I just started playing the six, but... Come on, man, you're the expert here. <laughs> nah, uh, <laughs> Be honest with you it's a new position for me so i'm i'm still learning um what about but, would you feel more comfortable giving three tips on center back then i mean i i feel like i feel like i can give you three tips that apply to to both the positions if that you know if that works because i mean first of all i i feel like you have to scan the pitch a lot in both positions so mm -hmm checking your shoulders consistently throughout the game is something that I notice, um, especially at the six, because a lot of times, you know, if you're checking to get the ball, your back could be towards, you know, the rest of the field. And if you're not checking your shoulders or you're not aware of what's around you, that could really screw you as far as, you know, where your touch goes or, or where the pressure is coming from. And I mean, as a center back too, you need to be scanning, making sure you're picking up marks, um, not just for yourself, but to able to communicate to your to your other players of who to pick up, you know, um, when to shift in, things like that. Um, obviously, like training one v one defending, um, knowing what the right distance is, you know, between you and whoever you're going up against is the proper distance to be able to, you know, either keep up with him, stand them up, get into a tackle, things like that. Your positioning as far as, um, you know, your orientation of the man, yourself and the ball. So I, I feel like that's, that's really big because a lot of, a lot of what one V one defending um, from what I found is, is where, you know, you're spacing between the guy and where you are you know, giving yourself a best chance to be able to nick it or win the ball um, and use your body, things like that. And then the last thing, honestly, is like, I feel like, it's, especially now, um, maybe not so much when I was younger, but as I got older, watching film is something that's like really beneficial, not just to those two positions, but to any player. Because, I mean, it's one thing when you're like eye level, you know, on the pitch, but when you start to watch film yeah, and really break like each play down, I, I feel like it makes a huge difference and which is the reason why a lot of teams consistently and daily go through film, you know, and, um, you know, for, for young players, I feel like, you know, sometimes you can see it as like it being a very tedious task and something that you don't always want to do or might find boring, but the higher the higher up you go the more you'll notice that they critique film a lot you know mm -hmm. they go over film a lot and i mean it's hard you know you don't you don't really get to get away with plays because they got it on video so that's why it's important to make sure you're giving it all you got and and being really honest with yourself because if you're not honest with yourself and you know or you can improve when they they come at you with the film you know what I'm saying? You see where that could be, you know, like um, kind of conflicting. Like, so I'd, I'd say those are the three things. Nice. Yeah, those are good points. I hope players get apply those that watch this uh, interview. Um, 
you know, you mentioned USL Championship being there in three years, playing in front of thousands and thousands of fans. It's probably something that, that you're used to by now. But uh, is it something that you enjoy? Do you enjoy playing in front of thousands of people? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I think the atmosphere that you play in um, makes a big difference in, in how you feel on the pitch. And, you know, um, even, even the, the intensity of the game. Um, you know, everyone was able to see, like, not just in, in the league I play in, but in, like, Champions League and the Premier League, whatever league that you watch during the pandemic, what, the, you know, the huge difference as far mm -hmm. as, you know, having fans versus not having fans, you know, it, it makes a big difference. And, you know, I feel like as a player, like, when you have that support from your home field crowd, you know, or you have to, you know, um, go up against an opposing team's banter or, or you know, their, their chance or whatever it is to throw you off um, that obviously affects you in, in either, you know, a positive or a negative way, depending on how you take it. Absolutely. Leading towards uh, the end, Alex, the last question um, that I'll ask, and then we have the five speed questions is, what's your most memorable soccer moment? Um, in recent memory, I'd have to say signing my first, my first pro contract. Wow. That was a, that was a big one for me. Just, just because, you know, as a kid, you dream of it, you know what I mean? You, you're, you're working towards this one goal your whole life. And, um, you know, just, just like putting all this work in and, and, um, being able to finally be like, okay, like I did it. And now, you know, what, what, what goes on, you know, after this is, you know, dependent on me is it's, um, it's, it's a great feeling, you know, and, and seeing your family and, and knowing that they're proud of you, um, for what you were able to achieve was, you know, a really, really nice moment for me in my life. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. And especially, I mean, I'm assuming here, well, I shouldn't assume, you're probably the first person in your family to sign a pro contract. Uh, yeah. Yeah, huge yeah. accomplishment. That's massive. So that's cool. Um, Thanks, man. Again, yeah, I wish you the best of luck with your, 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 new, your new team, the new season. Uh, that's actually on, it, on its way now. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll dive into the five speed questions. And then, yeah. So uh, who's your favorite team? My favorite team growing up to watch was Barca. Barca, favorite Barca. player. Yeah, so I'm sorry, what was that? Oh, I was going on to the next one. You said Barca, and then I, uh, I was asking you, do you have a favorite player? Yeah, so when I, when I was watching Barca a lot, I would always watch Puyol play, you know. Because Puyol. Puyol, oh, yeah, yeah, Puyol, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's me, was my favorite player to watch. Mm-hmm. What about, do you have a fair, uh, favorite pair? Wow. <clears throat> do you have a favorite pair of boots or cleats? Yeah, I like tempos. Tempos, yeah. You're a defender, for real. Yeah. <laughs> what, this is like off field. What about your favorite food? Um, favorite food? Probably like um, enchiladas. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm Mexican, so. I mean, uh, my mom makes enchiladas, and I mean, I think they're I think they're bombs. So. <laughs> nice. Um, and the last one, uh, your favorite artist? Um, nah, nah. probably Snoop Dogg. Snoop. Yeah. Snoop favorite track by him? What's up? Favorite track by him? Um. What's my name? What's my name? I don't yeah. know, I know that one. <laughs> yeah, it's it's from his like one of his first albums, but yeah, I mean that that was always one of my favorite artists. Yeah, I know I said I know I said last question, but usually um, what I do is I dive into the roots into like the beginning, like your roots. You, you mentioned you were from Mexico. Um, you know, if you don't mind, would you be able to share like? you know for the viewers that haven't been to mexico like what it is like in mexico like i personally haven't been there yet i hope to go one day but yeah well i've only been a few times my like okay so i was born here 
right, in, in California, but both of my parents were originally born from Mexico. So that's where I get, you know, um, a lot of my culture from. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been to Mexico a few times. Um, you know, I think, I think it's nice being able to, you know, see that, that side of, you know, who I am and, and, you know, I'm really proud of, you know, um, the culture I come from and, and where my parents were from. Um, because I mean, that they're, they're always very hard workers and, and they, I feel like they instilled that into me. And I, I feel like that comes with the culture I come from as well. And, you know, being able to, to see that and, you know, learn, um, what that culture is like, I, I find very interesting. And like I said, uh, it's, you know, it's a good feeling to know that I come from like a very proud, you know, people. Yeah. I mean, I hope, I hope I get to go see it one day too. I, I've heard Mexico is really nice, but Alex, uh, before we go, I just want to thank you for taking the time for joining us on the one talk nation podcast today. No problem, man. I really appreciate you having me. Thank you. Appreciate it.